I put the British Bergfeld gravity filters to the test using a certified lab to see how well they really perform under real world conditions. These systems offer two different filter types, the ultra stericil and the ultra fluoride, each designed to target overlapping but also distinct contaminants. So I tested both using the same rigorous data-driven methods we apply to every filter we review. Whether you're prepping for emergencies or just want safer drinking water day to day with minimal plastic exposure, then stick around because you won't want to miss this one. Before we get into the performance data, let's quickly talk cost because the British Bergfeld is actually one of the most affordable stainless steel gravity filters I've tested. The most popular model, the 2.25 gallon Duke, is on sale for about $280 at the time of recording. That price includes four ultra stericil filters, or for $58 more, you can swap those out for two ultra fluoride filters, which target a few additional contaminants. Now, in terms of long-term cost, the stericil filters work out to about nine cents per gallon based on a $78 price tag and 800 gallon lifespan per pair. The ultra fluoride filters cost more, around $130 for the pair, so you're looking at about 16 cents per gallon. Even with that added cost, both options are either on par with or cheaper than the ongoing costs of similar gravity fed systems like Berkey and Pro One. And unlike brands that make inflated 6,000 gallon filter capacity claims without data to back it up, British Bergfeld claims a far more realistic figure of 400 gallons per filter. So aside from being affordable, there are a number of other things I really liked about the British Bergfeld filters. One major highlight is that the ultra stericil filters are NSF certified to NSF ANSI standards 42, 53, and 401 for reduction of particulates, cysts, turbidity, and microplastics. These are industry recognized third party certifications that most stainless steel gravity filters don't have, making this system one of the few with verifiable performance claims. The design is also a step above the competition. Little things like the high quality hole plugs used when running just two filters help prevent leaks into the lower chamber and come pre-installed, which is a nice touch. The unit itself is made from sturdy 304 stainless steel, and they've recently started offering stainless steel spigots. The filter vessel and ultra stericil filters are also certified to NSF ANSI 372 for lead-free construction, a rare certification among stainless steel gravity filters, and another indicator of build quality. Setup was refreshingly simple, and unlike other systems, the Bergfeld filter doesn't require priming. You just install the filters, fill the upper chamber, and let the water saturate the ceramic naturally. That also makes maintenance just as easy since you can replace the filters without any extra prep work. And finally, the warranty and return policy are solid. A lifetime warranty not only on the stainless steel housing, but also the filters and a 30 day money back guarantee even if you've used the system. As solid as the British Bergfeld systems are in many areas, there were a few drawbacks. First, while the ultra stericil filters are backed by official NSF performance certifications, the ultra fluoride filters aren't. However, at the time of recording, certification is supposedly in progress, though it is still pending. Its slow filtration speed was a bit of a letdown. First, it took a while for the filters to become saturated and start filtering. Then even after saturation, flow rates remained extremely slow, just 0.27 gallons per hour in our tests. To put that in more relatable numbers for you, that means it took seven and a half hours to filter 2.02 gallons, which is the full capacity of the upper chamber. That's one of the slowest filtration rates I've seen among all of the gravity filters we've tested. Then there's the issue of overflow. Like other stainless steel gravity systems, water continues flowing from the upper to lower chamber even when the bottom is full. And since there's no way to see how much water's in the lower chamber, it's surprisingly easy to cause an overflow. Bergfeld does offer sight glass spigots to solve this problem, but those start at $35, which seems a bit steep for something that solves an inherent design issue. Still, when you compare this to the one that Berkey offers, it's half the price. Finally, we detected a slight leaching issue from one set of ultra fluoride filters, so now let's talk about our lab tests. For this project, I evaluated two British Bergfeld systems side by side at the same time, one equipped with ultra stericil filters and the other with ultra fluoride filters. Each system was tested after running 30 gallons of water through it to ensure the filters were properly saturated and functioning as intended. Our unfiltered water contained fluoride and uranium at levels above the most conservative health protective benchmarks in the industry called the health guideline level or HGL. The ultra stericil filter 
filters eliminated uranium completely, but as expected, did not reduce fluoride since that's not their intended function. They also fully removed detectable levels of copper, chlorine, and molybdenum. Nitrate was reduced by 70%, while barium saw a minimal reduction of just 8%. We also detected a slight increase in sulfate concentrations, rising by about 15%, as well as modest increases in minerals like magnesium and bicarbonate, 41% and 28% respectively. Carbonate showed a more pronounced change, increasing from just 0.045 to 0.58 ppm, a 1,188% increase. Interestingly, potassium wasn't present in the unfiltered water, but appeared at 1.04 ppm after filtration. My hypothesis is that these increases are likely coming from the filter media or the ceramic shell itself. Strontium increased by a minimal 3% from just 0.112 to 0.115 ppm, well below the HGL of 3 ppm. Now, the ultra fluoride filters gave us some unexpected results. As anticipated, they consistently removed 100% of all detectable fluoride across all three rounds of testing. And yes, we tested the ultra fluoride filters three separate times, here's why. In our first test, aluminum showed up in the filtered water at 0.689 ppm, just above the HGL of 0.6 ppm. Based on what we know about the filter design, our hypothesis is that this aluminum detection is actually activated alumina, the filter media that's used inside the ceramic shell for fluoride removal. To investigate further, we conducted a second test using a completely new pair of ultra fluoride filters. This time, we initially only ran 10 gallons of water through the filters before testing. I wanted to see if activated alumina washout would actually be increased as less water had flowed through the filters. In this test, aluminum was already present in the unfiltered water at 0.131 ppm, but was not detected post-filtration. So the new filters did not leach aluminum, and this suggests that the issue in test one was likely limited to that particular set. Something else I wanna mention here is that if aluminum leaching is a pervasive issue, it will be identified during extraction testing, which is part of the NSF certification process. For a filter to get certified, it's not only tested for its contaminant reduction performance, but also to make sure it's not leaching any unwanted contaminants from the filter itself. And I actually reached out to the NSF to confirm that aluminum is indeed one of the contaminants that the lab looks for during this extraction testing. So this is definitely something to keep your eye on, since the ultra fluoride filters are currently undergoing testing for official certification. Once we see that they obtain certification, we can be confident that aluminum leaching is not a pervasive issue with these filters. Now something else unexpected was detected during the second test. Dichloromethane, or DCM, a volatile organic compound, was detected in the filtered water at 2.16 parts per billion, even though it wasn't detected in the source water. Given how slowly these filters actually filter the water, the presence of a highly volatile compound like DCM was unusual to say the least. So I worked closely with the lab to rule out any cross contamination, carryover, or equipment error by reviewing the quality control checks and previous samples the equipment had been used to analyze. But given that the detection of 2.16 ppb was just above the reporting limit of 2 ppb, we couldn't rule out an isolated anomaly or an actual leaching event. So we ran a third test using the same filters from test 2 to confirm if either the aluminum or the DCM findings would repeat. This time, aluminum was again detected in the source water at 0.131 ppm and measured at 0.109 ppm post-filtration, which is a 16% reduction. Interesting to see that it wasn't detected in test two, but it was in test three, but still I was happy to see it was less than the source water. Importantly, no dichloromethane was detected in test three, which suggests its appearance in test two was likely an isolated incident. Beyond those couple of anomalies, the filters performed well across the board. They fully removed uranium, chlorine, copper, and molybdenum in the first test and successfully eliminated chloroform, a disinfection byproduct, in both tests two and three. No DBPs were detected in test one, so we couldn't evaluate
evaluate their reduction in that round. Barium reduction improved across tests, 83% in test one, and fully removed in both tests two and three. Strontium reduction also seemed to improve with the second set of filters. We saw a 15%, 46%, and then 57% reduction across the three tests respectively. Nitrate was reduced by 29% in test one, but wasn't detected either before or after filtration in the second or third. Interestingly, magnesium and sulfate were detected at increased levels after filtration in all three tests. Magnesium increased by 59% in the first test with the first set of filters, and by a more significant 790% and 492% in the second and third tests with the new set of filters. And sulfate levels rose by 303, 341, and 213% respectively. These increases suggest that these substances are likely being introduced by the filters themselves, either from the filter media or the ceramic shell. Now, magnesium is a beneficial mineral, so its presence really isn't a concern. And while the percent increases of sulfate might seem dramatic, concentrations remained well below the health guideline level of 500 ppm at 32.7, 44.1, and 31.3 three ppm respectively. Similar to the ultra sterosyl filters, we also saw carbonate concentrations increase with the first set of filters in test one by 188%. But interestingly, in tests two and three with the new set of filters, carbonate decreased by 88% and then 91% respectively compared to the source water. So after putting the British Bergfeld through extensive lab testing and real world evaluation, do the pros outweigh the cons and who would I recommend it for? The system offers strong value for the price, especially when you factor in its sturdy stainless steel construction, minimal plastic components, NSF certified performance from the ultra sterosyl filters, and lower long-term maintenance costs compared to many of its competitors. It's one of the few stainless steel gravity systems to hold official certifications for contaminant removal, which gives it a clear edge over the more expensive systems that rely solely on unverified, sketchy testing and marketing claims. Though our testing did detect an apparent activated alumina leaching issue from the first set of ultra fluoride filters, our follow-up testing with a new set of filters which did not detect aluminum suggests that the first filters may have been damaged. And again, these filters are currently in the certification process with the NSF, which will identify if aluminum leaching is a prevalent issue or not. The extremely slow filtration rate is another consideration. At just 0.27 gallons per hour, this system may not suit larger households or anyone needing higher volumes of water throughout the day. With all that in mind, I do recommend the British Bergfeld if you're looking for a reliable, low-maintenance gravity system for daily use, off-grid living, or emergency preparedness. And especially if you value certified performance and quality construction over marketing hype. For most people who want safer, cleaner drinking water without complicated installation or difficult filter priming, British Bergfeld holds its own as one of the most trustworthy gravity-fed systems on the market. And if you're curious how it stacks up against the big Berkey, which is one of the most well-known filters in this category, then definitely stick around for the next video. Click or tap to keep watching.